Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I feel like you're not ready. I'm always ready, except when I'm not. Mm, that's also fair. Hello and well, nope. Uh, oh. Hello and welcome to Saving People, Queering Things, the supernatural podcast where we're going to need some of those shots that Ellen and Cass were taking. <laughs> Today, we're pulling up to season five, episode 10, Abandon All Hope. I am your host, Elena. My pronouns are she, they, and I am having a lot of feelings today. How are mm. you, my lovely co-hosts, August and Noah? Feeling all the feelings at the same time, and it's the worst. I'm Noah. It was a rough, rough episode. <laughs> I agree. My name is August, my pronouns are they, them, and I remembered that I always skip this episode, so I've not seen it as many times as I've seen a lot of other episodes this season, because I forgot a bunch of the, like, big plot stuff that happens in this episode, because I don't watch it usually because it makes sad. Can't imagine why. That's very valid. I couldn't avoid it this time, so here we are. I'm proud of you for making it through it this time. And, uh, yeah, uh, Noah has known this was coming because you kind of had some spoilers <sighs> in advance for this one. Yeah. So, Not from us, just from... No, no. I had seen, I had seen the, you know, compilations and the videos of this scene many a time, and it it made me cry then, just just as bad as it did. Well, not just as bad, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was already heart wrenching because you can see just from that little moment, like, uh, mm, crushes you. Already you. They, you already knew they weren't making it out yeah. eventually. Yeah. And then too soon, honestly. Mm, far too soon. Yeah. See, I'm kind of the opposite of August in this one. I, for whatever reason, I like to watch the really sad. <laughs> I do too. Uh, I just not this one. I yeah, this. <laughs> one, I think I like this one so much because I'm a, a Dean and Joe truther. Mm. Oh, okay. So, we're gonna talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, we are. We'll get into that. And so, yeah, I, I have to. This is quintessential. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 a doozy. This episode. Now that you've met your host for today, it's time to catch you up. If you haven't watched Supernatural recently, here is what you've missed on the road so far. First, our darling Noah is going to recap the series. Are you prepared, my friend? I'm ready. All right, let's let's give you a countdown. Yeah. All right, three two, one, go. Okay, so these two brothers have been set on this path from birth to be vessels for these historic angels, Lucifer and Michael. They've been getting closer and closer to it season after season. Dean went to hell, started the breaking the seals, leading to Sam starting the apocalypse, which released Lucifer, which brings them to this season hunting down Lucifer. It's Sam, Dean, Cass, Bobby, all trying their best to find him, whatever way they can. Nice, nice. That actually it good thematic recap for this for this particular episode really drawn yeah. on this yeah theme. you kept it very big picture which is nice yeah it's a you know, broad i think we're past the point where we have to be like sam and dean are brothers who do <laughs> like yeah true. like we at can... this point if you don't already know that if you know you know yes. um, yeah you know right. those are those are basics <laughs> well august are you ready to tell us where we're at in this Ooh. episode boy it's been a while since i've done an episode recap i believe in you I am not ready, but count me in. Fantastic. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so we meet Crowley. He makes He's making a deal. He's making a home flow uncomfortable. We love to see it. Uh, then he meets up with Sam and Dean, goes, yes, I will give you the cult because, you know, Lucifer is probably going to kill all the demons if he kills uh, all the angels in the rest of the world. Sam and Dean, uh, along with Ellen and Joe and Bobby, are like, okay, well, we got to find Lucifer. But Crowley said this is where Lucifer is going to be. So they go to this town. Uh, but there's Meg and there's Hellhounds and she's working for Lucifer. And Ellen and Joe sacrifice face themselves and lucifer is releasing death stunning you did it you got everything you could in there no notes yeah <laughs> beautiful just beautiful. chef's kiss <laughs> thank you thank you so now that we've got all caught up, it is time to pick some music to accompany us on our journey. Who's got our first episode mixtape suggestion for this week? I'll go ahead. Take it away. I went with the song Chasing Honey by Wild Party. Ooh. It's a little more upbeat than I thought I was going to pick for this episode, but it's mostly because of the chorus, which is, it's like someone's determined to change how I think, but if I just close my eyes, I'll wake from each dream. Would it let you down if I don't grow up? Would it make you proud if we gave up? And that kind of sums up how Ellen and Joe are <clears throat> handling their feelings this episode. So, well, fine. 
and it's upbeat to fit with how uh, I have to process all of this to be able to keep going, you know? <laughs> Fine. You know, you gotta, you gotta get through. Laugh uh, so we don't cry. I'm going to go the same theme, but the opposite direction. Um, yep. I'm going to go with a, a song by Bear's Den called uh, When You Break. And <gasps> it's- I love that song. Yeah. I mean, it's a song about blame and forgiveness and guilt and forever coming and going and, you know- I think it, I think it's meant a little bit more uh, like a love song. Um, but you're thinking about when you're thinking about Joe and you're thinking about her relationships with a lot of different people in this episode, particularly. Some of the lyrics also have very parental child sort of vibes. I think you can interpret them that way. You know, it's a, it's a sad song about you know it kind of being too late to uh, to change things. And uh, I haven't it's... thought about that song in a long time. It just hurts. Yeah, it was on it was on my original Alteria playlist. Oh no. Nice. Yeah, my uh, my pick for this week because it's because it's a sad episode and and I have you know a, a type. Uh, I'm going with a Lincoln Park song. Uh, <laughs> this week's selection is easier to run. Mm. The lyrics are just very much this episode. I think um, like the chorus of it. It's easier to run, replacing this pain with something numb. It's so much easier to go than face all this pain here all alone. Like mm. oof. And there's one little bit that actually like because we're t- going to be talking talking a ton this week i think about you know as aforementioned dean and joe and ellen and all of them but on the note of sam uh mm. the one lyric from this that made me think of him was uh sometimes i remember the darkness of my past bringing back these memories i wish i didn't have and i think that like when sam is kind of facing lucifer and he's reminding him of like all this stuff that he's done i think sam is really having a freak out there and that lyric reminded me of it so yeah that's my yeah. pick for this week you know Oh, just just light just fluffy not. fair um for just a just a light fluffy episode just a casual episode a casual episode that makes us feel no things at all um <laughs> none at all <sighs> So now that we've got our mixtape playing, it is time for this week's hunt. And today we are exploring the 10th episode of season five, Abandon All Hope. And our card this week, which I like just really, really, really wanted to be the card for this week is the tower. Yeah. So August, why don't you share a little bit about the Supernatural Tarot deck? Yeah. So we are we are pulling from the Supernatural Tarot deck. So each card is a specific character or event from the show. And the themes are taken from the traditional tarot uh, understandings of these cards, but with a, a bit of a supernatural interpretation or twist to it. So I'm going to just read the, the tower card. I'm going to leave out a couple of things that are more plot specific for uh, parts of the show we haven't reached yet, but I'll read in general. And then Elena's going to talk a little bit more about the card in card more specifically because this is like a very significant card in tarot like this is a this is a card with a lot of weight to it so i think it will help us with our conversation are we allowed to know what's on it without it being spoilery or is it too spoilery? Uh, it's too spoilery oh darn the tower represents a powerful destruction. While this sort of chaos is often initially perceived as negative, the destruction ultimately leads to new beginning, which can represent an important step on your overall life path. The, so if the card is upright, it the ter- tower heralds a collapse of an existing structure or system. Whatever unforeseen twist of fate this may represent in your life, it is sure to shake things up in a major way. While this change can be rattling, it's necessary and inevitable. Trust that everything will turn out all right in the end. And if this card is reversed, it's indicating that you're resisting a major change. Uh, You know what needs to happen, but are refusing to acknowledge the truth. Accepting the reality of the situation, even if it's difficult, will ultimately benefit you more than denial will. Mm -hmm. That's that's the tower in this deck. Uh, It's connected to a specific character that we'll meet later on in the series, but yeah. That is very spoilery. Yeah, that thematic uh, idea of, uh, I think particularly the reversed card meaning the resisting a major change you know knowing what needs to happen but you're refusing to acknowledge the truth we've got all these themes of like destiny going on right now in the storyline and i think this is really connected but elena do you have anything else to kind of add and share with us yes gladly so as august was saying this is a card that's from the major arcana um so it is a really important card in the deck it's probably i mean in tarot there are no good cards and bad cards <laughs> but you know this tends to be one of the cards where when it shows up uh people start to sweat a little it's uh, i would I'd venture to say it's also it, this card scares me more than the death card when i get the tower i'm like oh boy something is coming Some shit's coming 
you know, like, like you were saying, disaster, destruction, uh, trauma, sudden change. The Since we can't describe the supernatural version, the main version of the card usually depicts a very tall, thin tower, and there's often lightning, uh, either striking the tower or near the tower. Sometimes you will see the depiction of a tower falling, like it's been it's been struck. And yeah, it's, it's a rough card, and it felt like the right one for <sighs> such a such a discouraging episode uh so much happens in this episode that is upheaval in terms of like just all of the characters lives so i think it's a good card for this week it's very fits. turning point episode for the story i think the stakes yes. get raised a little bit this mm. is the i mean it's been quite a while since we've lost someone so significant to sanity yeah, yeah. in the story like someone has one, died which is what that hasn't happened since the ro- roadhouse well in the roadhouse it really was it was ash it wasn't yeah. multiple but yeah we well, haven't like lost but i assumed there were some other hunters that they were friends with off yeah, screen but in terms of, of us in the narrative yeah, like true, true, we true. haven't experienced as viewers we haven't experienced a loss like i think that's significant yeah yeah and not only that but we also get something huge by way of like you know i mean we'll get to see how this pans out and noah i'm really curious your thoughts on this moment in particular when lucifer confirms to sam he's like "Mm, i think you'll say yes and i think it'll be six months in detroit in detroit like i want to know what you felt about that moment because that's huge i think it's canon it's big but i feel like we've already established that we've changed paths from enverse you know because enverse dean hadn't seen the cult in over five years right or sam yeah or sam so I think the fact that they have the cult is already, you know, enough of a difference from that inverse path that some things could still work out the same. But Sam doesn't know that. Dean knows that. Detroit is where Sam says yes in inverse, but he didn't uh, tell in- Sam that? Question mark? <laughs> Big question mark about what Sam knows about inverse. Yeah. I'm willing to bet not much. Yeah. Yeah. Not. I mean, maybe maybe the Detroit part, like that seems like a part he might have shared because that's not really emotional. Like Dean's not, I don't think Dean sharing much about his own potential future but i think he might share that's those strategic pieces of information as soon as sam knows that there was an incident where you know dean might have learned more information he's asking so many questions about it and he's not going to leave it alone so like i think he can't tell him much at all except right, very so very basic stuff that he pretends to get from other sources yeah that's also yeah. seems yeah fairly 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 accurate are we just fully jump are we fully jumping in are we ready we yeah, just let's just dive right in Crowley's first episode. Crowley's here. Oh, I love this intro. Every every part of Crowley's intro in this episode, I love. I, yeah, every scene he's in just pops off like so good. Love Mark him. Shepard, first of all, fantastic. Love him. But was he on site? Of course he was. <laughs> Let me also double check that real quick because. <laughs> At this point, we just kind of assume. He was in Doctor Who, so... Yes, he was in Doctor Who, Firefly. Yeah, I forgot just how clear his, like, he is immediately. Like, I mean, obviously, I didn't forget about that very first scene where he makes a homophobe uncomfortable. Uh, King behavior, by the way. Um, Not, like, a huge fan of the whole, like... I'm not a fan of the kiss to make a deal thing in general, because it's kind of a big mess in terms of consent, and we've seen that before, and we've talked about that before but his conversation with the guy where he's like <laughs> cling to six decades of deep-seated homophobia <laughs> it's it's wonderful he is comfortable Crowley is comfortable in this vessel that he has you know he's a demon this is he's chosen a male vessel yeah it's it's a choice I he love just it has the vibes he just even in their, his conversation with Sam and Dean later it's still I'm like wow there's just so many there's so much sort of queer yeah. what I've always loved energy about too is just like what a pleasant surprise his every interaction is because yeah. you think like oh he's this big bad demon and you know they've just snuck into his complex or whatever and then he just immediately shoots his own henchmen uh-huh. in the head <laughs> and like gives them the thing they came for willingly like he's a surprising Crowley's yeah, unpredictable he's so refreshing but Crowley's also like so I think what it works and i think this is mark shepherd and the writing but like crowley is so funny and we've had yeah. so many big bad we've had some big bad villains that are just like i am dark and evil and brooding and crowley is like just funny crowley is funny you know he's powerful you know he gets 
gets shit done. But he's also just like, he's so much more lighthearted in his like persona yeah. than like Azazel or Alistair or Lilith or literally yeah. like any other big bad we've had so far. And I think that's, it's, refreshing is a good word. Yeah, it's yeah, it's great to see. I feel like Mark Shepard watched a little bit of, you know, how demons interacted and was like, oh, okay, so they're kind of horny. Okay. <laughs> I like it. it just, Let's make that I more fun. I think that might just be Mark Shepard. <laughs> understood the assignment. I mean, to yeah, understood the assignment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. His take that Lucifer is going to go after all demons next is interesting. Doesn't sound super plausible. You don't? You don't agree? Don't agree. I mean, I think it's possible sure but i don't think i don't that doesn't seem like a lucifer type plan you know i i wonder if like what he's worried about is not necessarily like for sure that lucifer will kill them all but that lucifer will expect them to obey him and if they don't then lucifer will kill him and crowley does not seem like someone who wants to take orders yeah from no. someone up top yeah. yeah so like someone like meg seems totally fine like seems like totally gung-ho to be like yeah i'll fall in line I and like worship and follow Lucifer. Whereas Crowley seems to be like, this is just going to be a new regime and one that's going to want to have control over me. And if they don't get it, wonder if that's like more... Like, I wonder if, you know, Lucifer's not going to kill everyone. Well, he's a top. Yeah, he's a ruler. He is absolutely a top. Yeah, he's, he's got big top energy. He's sort of playing it off like he remembers his humanity a little bit more. You know, he mentions that he's in sales, damn it. <laughs> He's, yeah, he wants to make his demonicness very human. Yeah. He's like, I'm just, you know, a businessman with like a bit more power. He's, uh, he's kind of just in that bit. way, uh, with the, the, I'm in sales, damn it. He's, he's got the like demonic, uh, version of Zachariah a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One less funny. Though I guess, you know, funny is Andrew in the garrison, He's only had so. one episode, you know, Z Zachariah's had plenty of time to be funnier. <laughs> Although uh, I'm sure Crowley's going to get plenty more time. He's one of the four people on the Netflix, you know, logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So that must mean he's important. Uh -huh. Netflix thinks he's important. It must be. It must be. Fuck Netflix. <laughs> Because Netflix always is very accurate in, in the screenshot they grab for the, oh, the yeah. promo. Mm, they canceled 1899 and I'll, I'll never forgive them for that. <laughs> That's all right. I'm never forgiving them for the OA. It's fine. That's okay. <laughs> we can't have Netflix slander on our podcast. Um, Just a little bit. That being said, Netflix, give us podcast support. <laughs> Sponsor us. That's fine. Yeah. This podcast is not brought to you by netflix <laughs> yet no yet. actually we don't want to be because then we'll get canceled yeah true they can't cancel us yeah don't give them that power Sam and Dean trying to come up with a plan about Dean wanting to Sam to avoid Lucifer and Sam saying, when have we ever done anything smart? Mm. <laughs> Oof. You know what? I love uh, that whole exchange at the table that they have. I think it's really, a really nice. Like they're actually, they actually feel genuinely on the same page and they've, you know, they've been for two whole seasons. They're being upfront and casual about the mistakes that they've made with each other. And that's a refreshingly honest pace for them. Yeah. Doesn't feel like they're trying to throw it in each other spaces it feels like they're actually going okay like this seems risky this is a strategy like let's talk strategy and we don't have to get we're not pulling in all of this baggage that we have yeah. at least not we're not using that to like weaponize it against each other which is nice they're very much allies in this episode and you don't there's not a lot of really like other than that scene you don't get a lot of the two of them really interacting in any super meaningful scenes not really you know this episode's not about sam and dean's relationship no no like really at all it's about a lot of other relationships though i do want to point out one other thing in that is interesting in that exchange and that's that dean calls himself a game piece Mm. Which I think we see a little bit at the end of the episode too. Like Dean sees in this fight, sees himself as fairly disposable. Kind of goes like, and if I go in there and Lucifer like, hey, words me, like you can, we can, that's okay. Because then Michael's down a vessel and it's, it's still a win, you know? That's how he sees it. Yeah. Bingo. And that, you know. Classic Dean. Yeah. <laughs> He'll risk himself and his vessel ability, but not Sam and his vessel ability. Well, I think he just doesn't want, I mean, they're not going into a situation where Michael is going to be there. They're going into a situation where they don't want to hand Lucifer. Like, he's, I don't want to hand Lucifer his vessel. True. I guess the real test will be once Michael shows up, if Dean is wanting to remove himself from the equation or not. Mm. Yeah, hmm. yeah. If we get there. Huh? If we get there, you know, see, uh, I do appreciate that Sam Winchester having trust issues with the demon. Thank you oh. for your continuing support. I think it's better very late funny. than never. <laughs> so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that is one of my favorite moments of the episode because it's just like it like you said, it's them kind of acknowledging their pain and their baggage, but for the first time in a long time, it's in a lighthearted way. Yeah. And genuinely lighthearted. Not like one of them is making light of it and the other one's actually really hurt by it, which yeah. is what's happened up to this point. Mm-hmm. It's a good moment. Can we back up to like the first interaction of the crowd of Crowley with the Winchesters? Oh yes. In that whole conversation. The Hardy Boys finally found me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Crowley might make more references than Dean does. Yeah. In this episode, for sure. In this episode, in this moment, it's he's he's given me know, just in general. <laughs> Riley might be one of the only characters that actually does references like at the same pace as Dean. Um, Not Zachariah. <laughs> Well, Zachariah isn't really, he, yeah, no. I would say Crowley's still got an edge. Crowley's are more natural. Zachariah's are just yes. awkward. Zachariah's no. are like, let me pull from this pop culture information I have acquired. Crowley is like, is like, I know what the Hardy Boys are. He's like, like uh-huh, you guys are Hardy Boys. He's like, uh-huh. I not only know how to use this reference correctly, I know how to use it correctly to make you mad at me. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like piss you off a little bit. Um, you, you two are at best functioning morons. At least. <laughs> Oh, Dean. Which, to be fair, uh, Dean just asked, like, why would you want the devil dead? Um, <laughs> which, you know. Come yeah, on, bud. Yeah. I, okay. I do think that it's very funny that Dean gets all flustered after that comment. Mm. Dean's like, you're functioning more. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I do love that bit. Yeah. For no reason. I'm like, it's morons. <laughs> It's just Dean being like unable to form a comeback when a handsome man has said something to him. It's just a running theme. When a dashing Scotsman enters the chat, Dean loses all composure. You're a moron. You're <laughs> <funny anymore. laughs> I hadn't thought of it from that angle, but now I will never be able to unsee it. And I thank you for that. There's also a Crowley, do you know how deep I could have buried this thing comment earlier about the cult, which I just also was like this my mind goes to anyway <laughs> moving on we're moving on yeah. <laughs> I still want to say something I mean, you yes, August. without telling me you read tell me <laughs> anyone else make a comment stop me from talking more no this is great let this happen Elena yeah I'm I'm co-signing this entirely <laughs> I think the podcast is all the better for it yeah, honestly <laughs> yeah we started off season four with podcast police and pegging so we're doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> also i think that crowley okay but crowley at the end of that goes like how about like the delivery of like how about you don't miss okay moron like that delivery is just <laughs> how about you don't miss <laughs> yeah, and i love it when mark shepherd yells things it's yeah. my favorite genre <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but so going from Crowley to right after one of the happiest, you know, groups in this fucking show that loves to kill people. This is the happiest little squad. Well, very last night on earth vibes. Oh my god. Okay, first of all, like explicitly yeah. using that line. Mm. The picture, the picture. Which, if you will remember, is the picture like like that picture. This is an iconic jerk. This oh my is an iconic god! Pic. I always forget that he burns it though. Also, um, yeah, that hurt. The, the similarity between this picture and the picture in Inverse, yeah, mm. it always get me because it's yeah. like Bobby again. It's like a bo- very Bobby thing. It's a dad like, move. Let's take a picture together. Remember this. Well, the way that he says like usual suspects. Uh, <laughs> this know? is not the first time that Bobby has corralled them into a picture. Is what I get from this. No. I, oh, sure. I want to see Bobby's photo album. Well, maybe he doesn't have one because he just burns them all <laughs> <laughs> and he is we're using the world's <laughs> oldest camera Listen, oh my god yeah, yeah. Very, this is it's 2009 like now that i think about it like taking a picture and then burning it after it's ve- it's very pagan behavior of him mm, yeah that's it's you know and it's very like cover your tracks don't yeah. leave any evidence you know Cass is a literal angel he just stood there for a picture like <laughs> just stood okay. there for seems so like just he's just in he's just here he's just into it at this point he's so invested in being a hunter like being with them because he's sitting at the table he's doing shots with ellen you know like that's such a wholesome vibe the way that that misha goes i think i'm starting to feel something (laughs) (laughs) after five in a row oh my god it's like 
probably other than maybe like 503 this is one of the most human he's ever been like in this these two scenes yeah the scene with ellen and the scene with the photo like yeah he misses the social cues and he's like tomorrow we hunt the devil this is our last night on earth but like he's also like using he's using that's a dean line he's using that from 503 like dean makes that joke in 503 about you know what do you do on your last night on earth and he is bringing that back around like it Cass is learning how to be human like he's learning human behavior and it's great to see great to see. okay elena i need to hear about because we're kind of in this scene we need to talk about dean and joe because i okay okay do not ship dean and joe um at all not even a little bit like 10 percent, maybe wow okay so i am gonna need both of you to like convince me because i just like i cannot they are siblings to me in the strongest sense and i just okay so the flirtation ship is always there it's there from the jump and it's it's a like a two-sided thing like they are both articulate within the very first episode of meeting each other that they're interested see that's the the only time i buy it but then after the whole thing with bad day at black um no not bad day with once she's possessed or like when sorry when when sam is possessed and assaults her after that point i i can never see it again that's my Mm. switch point anyway so uh, yeah no see for me it's even worse that episode because like you know she it's the clat like i'm a sucker for like tropes and the whole like <laughs> the the whole trope of like person you know who likes person is tending to person's wounds like oh my god i fucking die every single time <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm for that shit and so i love that moment and i just feel like i think that they definitely do have that siblingy sort of dynamic at times but but I think that Joe was always interested in Dean and Dean always saw it as like, if I, if I make this happen, Ellen will murder me. Mm. And so that's True, why he accurate. never pursues it. Um, it's I don't, yeah, also don't but, think he could, I don't think he could let Ellen let Joe be like a one night stand no, no and he like, wouldn't and that's why I shipped them because they had staying power because they were both mm-hmm. hunters they were both in the life and they just get each other and they're just they have this like very easy sort of like dynamic between the two of them like mm-hmm. the way that he's like yeah you know well we could we could hook up for last night and she's like I have too much self respect like come on like I love that <laughs> The way that she, she, him, she re- does call him sweetheart, which is, is, uh, yeah. the is, way that is, she rejects sassy, that but- advance is exactly like she absolutely, I think that she does that because she's like, when we survive, then I'm going to hook up with him. Like, that's what I got from that interaction. <laughs> like, you right. know, it's and- not a, it's not a, no, I would never sleep with you. It's a like, honey, like if I do it on our last night on earth, that's yeah. Like, no, I have more self-respect. Thank you very much. <laughs> like if, when we finally hook up, it's going to be because I come on to you like that's what I got okay okay and so I've always liked them because they just they they meet each other at the same level like Mm. when Dean flirts with people usually it's this very like hello I'm this you know debonair stranger who's gonna raise my eyebrows at you and flirt with you and you know whatever but with Joe it's like hey you're a hunter you're my friend you're he also is awkward around Joe which I guess is also a point in that because he short circuits because he's wonderful right and he doesn't usually short circuits when when he's flirting unless it like is with someone like Joe or like Cass where he actually cares about the result yeah and and what seals it for me mm-hmm. is that in in this in his final moments with her he goes for a forehead kiss first yeah which that's... is just the tenderest fucking thing you can ever do to a person See, that's why I feel sibling issue no that's why I, that's why I get that's why nope. I'm not sure no like head kisses sibling forehead kisses can be either okay that's my thought interesting I think forehead kisses are just the tenderest thing that can ever happen between humans and and so the fact that that happened with them i'm just like oh yeah no i mean that that tracks that's my dean joe truther spiel as a new as a new person no as a like you've just seen this all the way through their whole arc i think elena's mostly right i think that dean and joe get each other they are totally easy connecting they're great they've always had a bit of back and forth will they won't they kind of vibe that mostly dean portrays and joe throws back every once in a while just to just to mess with him but 
<laughs> I think Dean was set, convinced that he and Joe would end up together at some point because yep. they'd both been in the life and they'd both, they had both, they had had that sort of realization where sometimes you meet somebody and you have just that, that tightness, that connection. And if you stay in the same circles and it's like, hey, I'm pretty sure at some point we're going to be together. I feel it. Like, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know why, but it's going to, we're going to get there. We just have yeah. to go on our own little journeys to get there. And then there's a little problem because then Dean meets Cass and that changes his perception Everything. of Joe. That's why he never called Ellen and Joe for all of season four. That's what I'm, that's what I'm landing on is because oh. he felt yeah. guilty about yeah. moving on from Joe. Yeah, that's, that's okay. kind of valid. Okay. I yeah. think that's I think, yeah, had Cass never showed up, the, uh, Dean and Joe would have been endgame. And that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I agree. Oh, you do you mean that like, Narr in within the narrative or do you mean that like within like the writing and creation as well like do you think i think narrative fucks up this the narrative mm -mm. no like do you think this do you think the showrunners were ever going to no okay that's no what i don't I but i think they should have if they were smart people which they're not because they write <laughs> for supernatural <laughs> <laughs> I say that with the utmost affection. By yeah, the way. we love some of the writers. <laughs> we do. It's like the writers of Supernatural are generally like like siblings. Like I'm the only one that's allowed to be mean to them. <laughs> <laughs> but so that tracks with the the forehead kiss being first to signify that hey, this really does mean more to me than yeah. just a kiss. Like this, you mean the world to me and then he kisses her as a real yeah like, mm. it's both because yeah, yeah I, I do hardcore agree that like forehead kisses are a very siblingy sort of like thing but it's it's the both of them yeah. it's you mean all of these things to me and the prolonged eye contact before and after like oh, that hey, and the way that, that he like shakes that like subjecting Joyce's being made. oh my god yeah. <laughs> that whole scene being just silent and everybody communicating with their faces fucking broke me it's oh. it's they do such a good job in this episode of the okay so i want to just bring this up in general it's a good time the music cues in this episode Ugh. are fucking phenomenal They're like incredible. throughout the whole like the fact the choice of no sound during that scene Ugh. like during the goodbye scenes and giving all of i also give every character a chance to say goodbye beautiful like they give both joe sam and ellen all get chances to say goodbye to joe like so respectful and yeah. really but like the music cues in this episode in general are like boy oh um, the one thing I also have to mention about that whole scene, him on the scanner with Bobby. Oh my God. And how okay. Bobby yes. like gently keeps him, like Bobby keeps him steady. Yeah. Bobby takes charge, but Bobby doesn't like drill sergeant him into no. a decision. Bobby just like takes charge because he goes like, you're panicking. You don't know what to do. I'm going to like walk you through it son literally oh. he said that's why i'm here is everyone all right and then he said no he said, what, I said, do, we what do, do we do next, next? <clears throat> i said like oh my god bobby such a fucking hero such a good dad in this episode oh, like good he is every every time bobby never fucking misses and no. dean is able to like be not he's able to like not know what to do he's able to be a he's like be lost mm -hmm. god it's so good this episode is fantastic yeah yeah ellen's whole goodbye where oh. she just makes eye contact and shakes her head he and is smiling and joe is like whoa, whoa hey stop not allowed no uh fucking grabs you by the heartstrings ellen and bobby are just good they're good parents like they are the example yeah. of like what good hunting good hunter parents can be you know yeah. like they are willing to put themselves on the line they're they stand by their family they are not drill sergeants they are not john winchester um yeah. like ellen is like you know ellen's like you know what like i don't love that you were in this life i didn't want you in this life i am not gonna leave you I'm not gonna let you be here alone she's like this is important i will not leave you here alone like john winchester could never yeah. um ellen stays behind and joe still leaves before her and that <laughs> fucking hurt oh yeah i was just gonna mention that the fact that like had ellen left it wouldn't have worked it wouldn't have worked no wouldn't have worked ellen had to be there well, okay no actually no 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 that's a disservice to joe i think she would have pushed it and held on if Ellen wasn't there but she felt I safe agree. in her yeah. mom's arms and so she let go I think Joe was holding on as long as she possibly could and and, and yeah yeah <sighs> 
Joe was one of my favorite characters. Honestly. We were underserved with Joe. Like, Joe and Ellen needed to be in, like, 20 more episodes than they were in. Seriously. We saw them in season two, and we've only seen them a handful of times. We were robbed. Truly. But Ellen takes all of her power with her, and she says, you can go straight back to hell, you ugly bitch. Like, beautiful. Beautiful. (sighs) Dean's face running away from the explosion, too. Oh, I have so many feelings. It's also, I think that they do such a nice job of like closing off Joe's arc and Joe and Ellen's arc. Like when Joe says to Ellen, this might literally be your last chance to treat me like an adult, might want to take it. Like it's such a closure thing from like we met them in season two and Joe wanted to hunt and Ellen didn't want her to hunt. And they've gone through this whole like, and then Joe ran away. Like they've gone through this whole like push and pull of like how to handle your child growing up and like wanting to, to be a hunter when, you know how dangerous that is and you know your husband died from you know like all these things like they've done such a nice job in the show of showing that messy transition into adulthood with like an adult child and i think it's they do it justice in the ending of it very much yeah. so she's only been in six episodes fucking crazy six episodes mentioned a couple mm-hmm. of the times but she's only been in six episodes <gasps> that's unreal they've had a huge impact for that yeah yeah oh one other tiny thing not to backtrack us but the fact in my support of the uh, Dean and Joe trutherness, <laughs> she gets hurt because she's trying to protect Dean. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that is a pretty good argument. <laughs> Like he, she goes back for him. She goes, she goes back, back for him. him. He also seems to be the person in that scenario who realizes how much hellhounds specifically are gonna oh, fuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as hellhounds enter the scene, he's on edge constantly. Yeah. She knows. And she knows that. She sees that. And she appeals to him later whenever you know she's trying to get their priorities straight. Like she's like, "Hey, yeah, Dean, these are hellhounds." Not remember? Lose your set. And yeah. you've been ripped apart by these before. She doesn't say that though. She she just like she she leaves that un said and she knows yeah. that everybody knows it she doesn't have to bring it up which is uh, she doesn't yeah. more powerful Dude, she does right she doesn't know him well because she knows that if he, you actually spell it out for him he's gonna be he's gonna have to like save face he's not yep. going to be willing to admit that he's having basically like a ptsd flashback in this moment when yeah. it comes to hellhounds but she's able to like draw his attention to it and go like take it seriously as she's literally bleeding out she's still having that care and consideration for him yeah. yeah, and and on the not to make it sad, but you know that I'm already Dean, sad. Yeah, yeah, it's already yeah. sad. Uh, Dean is gonna forever blame himself for that one. Oh my god, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think they. I think both Sam and Dean are gonna feel responsible for this, but I think particularly Dean, knowing that Joe wouldn't have been injured if yeah. it wasn't for him. He was, but she was trying to make sure he was okay. Okay, we have got to move on from <clears throat> talking about Ellen and Joe right now because it's gonna crush me. Can we talk about Kath and Lucifer? Let's talk about. About Cass and Lucifer. Yes. Let's do it. The music cues in the scene, uh, the piano and the crackling of the fire is mm, gorgeous. And Misha is giving us his best blue steel <laughs> throughout all of it. It's just, such a just mm, it's such a well like plotted scene. Book. It's such a like like cast, especially since we've just gotten a very human scene with Cass. Now we get like a very much like angel cast. Because he has to, I mean, he's pumping himself up a little bit because he's in front of one of his big brothers for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm, yeah because he asks his name he's like castiel right he he's unfamiliar Uh, yeah which is mm, terrifying that's bad 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 news (laughs) yeah on lucifer's radar not great and not only is he on his radar but lucifer thinks that they are the same it's a lot of pressure i rebelled i was cast out you rebelled you were cast out almost all of heaven wants to see me dead and if they succeed guess what you're their new public enemy number one Mm. i think that scares the shit out of cats and he doesn't know what to do with it yeah yeah well because i mean because it's lucifer's not wrong nope like none of that is wrong (laughs) like they're not actually on the same side but everything else he says is true just like lucifer cast is real cast rebelled for entirely different reasons but yeah it's he's changing cast's perception of it a little bit and making him doubt himself a little bit more because cast made all these decisions thinking that he was you know behaving of his own free will and now he's being compared to lucifer by (laughs) lucifer yeah that is a super good point yeah the idea that he isn't his free will is now being questioned as like maybe that's not a good thing yeah yeah he just needs anna to come back and remind him of why it is a good thing yeah i that'd be something i also 
Okay, the, he gets protective over Sam in the scene too. Oh yeah, I, is, I wanted us to talk about that because that really hit me. Mm-hmm. You're not taking Sam Winchester, I won't let you. <sighs> the character growth there. Yeah, the boy with Sam Winchester, the boy with the demon blood. <laughs> like, we've come so far. So far. God, I'm so proud of him. I and mean, he loves Sam because Dean loves Sam. And he loves Dean. Yeah. And you know, because, you know, like, that would be very bad for the apocalypse. But like, the way he says it is very, it's just very personal. It's not just like, it's care for Sam. It's not just because Lucifer getting his vessel would be bad for the apocalypse. It's also just because he's like, that's my friend. Yeah, it's it's real at this point. It's wholesome. I love to see it. Sam going to go confront Lucifer. Well, okay, Sam and Dean going to confront Lucifer. But Sam drawing his attention and Dean gets his his little, his moment. You know, he, yeah, well, I'd hurt you, so suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess, do, I do love that uh, Dean gets to shoot Lucifer in the head. He gets to do what he, like, couldn't, what he, like, knows he failed in doing in, in the inverse scenario, too. Like, for mm-hmm. him, like, this is a moment where he is changing the narrative. Like, they're switching the narrative from from it, the inverse timeline. Yeah. And that's why the panic in his face when he gets up. <laughs> is so raw, and he's so panicked. He's so, oh, no. oh like, my oh, god. Shit. Oh, shit, didn't have plenty, this- didn't have plenty. Yeah, this was their one plan. This was their one plan. (laughs) This was their one chance to ice the devil. And they took it, and they won, and it failed. (laughs) And, and you know, Sam and Dean have that conversation beforehand where they go, like, last words. Like, they are not expecting to make it out of this. But can we talk about that? Last words. And Dean just goes, I think I'm good. Because they've they've just said goodbye to Joe and Ellen. Like they've mm-hmm. they've already had I, enough. Yeah, I think there's there's this sense of like if we can stop the devil and this is all over, that's we did, it. We did the job. Yeah, which I mean, this is Dean Winchester. He's not actually doing well. No, um, but in that moment, there's a sense of like if this is the end, then this is the end. Yeah, <sighs> but then Lucifer gets up. He says, "Nope, oops, sorry." I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, <laughs> like oh no, this didn't work because if it, you like you have that moment you go through like all of the feelings because you're like oh my god they did it but then you remember like there's you know 12 more episodes this season and and just doesn't seem likely that they'd be able to kill the devil with literally the first plan they came up with yeah yeah doesn't doesn't work that way doesn't make for a great plot line usually sam gets so mad so mad that it doesn't work and uh lucifer's just like yeah yeah exactly keep going (laughs) it's the same thing that sam did with like azazel it's the same kind of like anger yeah like that's what sam expressed he's like i'm gonna kill you myself i'm gonna rip your heart out (laughs) yeah okay but notably when lucifer is like all that pent up rage i'm gonna need it sam immediately shuts it off he's like like, immediately which like it's grown so much he has this control over his anger that he like did not have a season ago yeah yeah Yeah. i'm so proud of him our little baby's grown up yeah he is (laughs) i i loved meg and Cass. their dynamic was fun that was that's where the next one i wanted to go them getting to chat a little bit was she was all super excited and he's like no (laughs) i don't know it was very good and then your god might be a deadbeat but mine mine walks the earth okay okay well baller sort of line like yeah way to hit on Cass's exact fear right now which is that god has just like left the building like every single every single person in this universe seems to know that Cass is looking for god and not finding him and they're all <laughs> pointing it out they're, they're like all your dad's him. a deadbeat your dad's you know not here god's not listening my dad's cooler than your dad like <laughs> <laughs> literally everyone angels demon everyone's like Cass <laughs> you're not gonna find him playing right on his fears but then he you know bumps her into the ring with him and then <laughs> throws her on top of the fire like yeah he says okay you know what you're my path out of here <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but it's a whole new definition to step on my neck but you know <laughs> <laughs> they have um a weird they have a, just a just a real intense vibe those two yeah they do real intense vibe can't wait it to makes see me more. so happy though knowing that like rachel minor and misha are like really close besties and that like they co-run random acts and like That's rachel so minor awesome. rachel minor is incredible she's such yeah. a cool person with like just a lot of does a lot of really meaningful work in different yeah. communities and like she's very cool and she just she takes this role of meg and just like knocks it out of the park yeah honestly i love that fucking queen and Cass, you know just being like you know literally pulling bolts loose and walking over people's backs and just <laughs> pretty badass i'm gonna lie yeah <laughs> we, love, we love a cast girl boss moment yeah <laughs> always uh going 
back to the Lucifer Sam conversation, I think just wanted to talk briefly about the because Lucifer says to Sam, he talks to Sam about like being a younger brother and having an older brother who he mm. loved and idolized. And I was thinking about how I think one of Sam's biggest fears is that like Dean will Dean will have chosen John over him. Like I think that was with the whole Stanford thing. I think that's like a insecurity of of Sam's. And I think that's really interesting that like Lucifer pulls pulls at this like thing mm. draws this parallel but the dean like sam just kind of ignores him and like goes back to dean which yeah. i think is interesting like dean has already changed that narrative like dean has ultimately shown that he'll choose sam not john yeah i feel like people who continue to harp on john with the brothers is they're like you know what? we've moved on he's gone yeah. we've gotten some like, closure we have we have growth <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kind of nice yeah yeah it just seems like not bother sam like sam gets all this stuff from lucifer but he doesn't it doesn't phase him the way it did even just like three or four episodes ago yeah season five sam is a whole journey mm-hmm. uh and the last kind of part of this episode is you know oh hello death oh, oh, death is released that mm-hmm. the way he says that I, like i say oh hello Ooh, fill in the death. blank like that sometimes just just casually because it's just to be oh, dramatic death and that's okay. We love that for you. Death has risen. How do we feel about that, Noah? Ominous. It's uh, it's coming. I'm very curious to see. I always like plays on the four horsemen, uh, you know, Apocalypse and X-Men and whatnot, but Okay, so I have a fun question for you, Noah. Um, well, I guess first question. Do you know who plays Death? I don't. I don't okay, good. Is. Perfect. Oh, wonderful. So, I'm so excited. That's fantastic. So excited. So my question for you is, if you could dream cast Death, um, <laughs> how do you yes. think... <laughs> How would you well, like Death look right. in the supernatural universe? Who's playing Death? Ideally, it'd be Gwendolyn Christie fulfilling. <laughs> oh yeah, her role. <laughs> Yo. because she's a queen. Fantastic. I love her and everything, but she's too busy being Lucifer. Oops, sorry. I... <laughs> can't wait i can't wait till you yeah this will be fun yeah i was really curious i was like i don't i don't know if no one knows so i wanted to know who 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 in your mind but you know horsemen that's a it's a big deal you got a horseman lucifer not only and the cult cannot kill lucifer so we are yeah officially back to square one as we get by the end of the episode like they Mm -hmm. are just kind of like well we are in a state of emergency. They're worse than square one because now they don't even have Ellen and Joe. Yeah, they're at like square negative two, the end of this episode. So that about wraps up our main discussion for today. Next, we're going to move into going meta, where we're tracking lore, representation, behind the scenes trivia, and more. Let's get started with our rep check. Rep check? Lucifer is a huge misogynist. Oh, yep. yeah. Gosh. Yeah, he is. <laughs> are we surprised? Like, to start. No, but it's so explicit. So yeah. explicit. It's Every like, able-bodied man, like women and children. Also, so also, we're also ableist. Yeah. <laughs> Massively. Yeah. Ableist, misogynist. I mean, I wouldn't expect the devil to be very inclusive. I mean, I feel like he should. Everybody gets punished, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's probably some... Anyway, it's 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 bad. Danny, Danny DeVito's Lucifer from Little Demon, he's, he's a little bit less ableist. Oh my God. He accepts all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a great topical reference. You saying that and thinking about this episode, for some reason, the synapses in my brain pictured... Danny DeVito as death? Danny DeVito, no. As as Lucifer going, can I offer you a cult in these trying times? I don't know why that's what my brain did. Uh... Anyway. But yeah, representation was abysmal. We had two phenomenally strong, phenomenally written female characters. Wait, though. Does it pass the Bechdel? Yeah, but like... I, I mean, I'm they horrible, immediately but... die, so yeah, I I'm know. not loving that. No, I think it does pass but... the back though, because they do talk to each other God. about their relationship. How sad is that? The one time we fucking pass, the characters are immediately killed. Uh, and like yeah. and like i am not there are, will be other characters where i'm like i don't think narratively we needed to kill that character i do think in the stakes of this season us it, losing some important characters is good 
good stake building. It yeah. is. Do I like it? But it Absolutely just, not. No. And do I like that it's female characters that are getting the chop? Like, again, don't love that. But yeah, that's that's one thing I will say. Like, it, yeah, this is a death where I don't like it, but it does make narrative sense that it occurs. I feel yeah. the same way about like Ash back in season two, where I'm like, I don't yeah. like it, wanted more, but it's not a nonsensical death. And Supernatural will get worse at that as the years mm-hmm. go on. This season oh, yeah. is better, I think, at appropriate yeah supernatural casualties really loves to kill people to further the man pain and i'm not a fan of it Mm -hmm. but this was a this one narratively makes sense this one's raising the stakes it's showing that this apocalypse is going to have a cost even if they win yeah anything else for rep so we have crowley's little moment at the beginning right you know with his (laughs) yes of course breaking the homophobia and but right after that he he does the kiss and then it zooms out to cast (laughs) creeping on it right (laughs) yes yes Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, he's watching. He's learning. <laughs> the camera angle on that. Again, I think the filming and the music and like everything's so well, it's well designed in this episode, like all across the board. Even yeah. as we speak, it's going down. Which <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's so good. But why? Okay, maybe one of you will know the answer to this. Why does he say Huggy Bear? Like, what is that a reference to? I just, I have no idea. It's so goofy. It and is I a reference. It. I'm going to find it. Uh, oh, look. Huggy Bear was the name of a character, uh, CI, in Starsky and Hutch on the 70s TV show. Classic little detective joint. So that's, that's Dean that fantastic. makes fantastic. That's such a, like, oh, Dean Winchester, the oh. man that you are. Okay, but we're coming back to references, I'm looking at the super wiki for this episode and they have pointed out that it is possible that Cass's, Ooh. I think I'm starting to feel something, is a Lord of the Rings reference. There's no way. It's I'd, possible. I'd be so proud, but I don't think that. Yeah. You know, I, it's yeah. possible. I feel like that's so, so far out of Dean's realm of references. No. Like, oh, no, it's not. No, no, no. Oh, this it's is not. It's not. But it's also Cass did. reference. Cass also uses it. It's Cass using it. Well, y- yeah. But I, I feel like most oh, of no, Cass's oh, references Dean. are attempts That's to fair. get Dean to notice That's fair. but Dean no. it does make Lord of the Rings references at least once or twice in the show okay okay as a- I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm entirely wrong. Maybe I'm way off base here. But I think as it's listed on the wiki, I think it's saying that like the writers put that in as a reference. Like oh, quite possibly. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I don't think it's Cass using it yeah. intentionally. I think it might be a, yeah, a- Cass is absolutely not doing okay. it on purpose. But I do love the idea that the writers put that in there. Yeah. I do like that. I think I'm starting to feel something. Also, we didn't mention this before, but like Crowley is also is a reference. Like Crowley's mm-hmm. name is a reference to uh, Good Omens. Uh Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman uh, could also be a reference to a famed occultist whose uh, works were an inspiration for one of Led Zeppelin's albums. So there's a couple of layers of potential references, writer-wise, for Crowley's uh, name as a character. Anyway. What's great is the the Crowley uh, that that it's also there that person's first name is Alistair. Yeah. So there's uh, a character, there's a per- there was a real person named Alistair Crowley <laughs> who was an occultist and philosopher. <laughs> this uh, this episode title is also a reference and it's a Dante's Inferno reference. It's a reference to the final line of the inscription of the Gates of Hell, where it says, abandon all hope ye who enter here. <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of references in this episode and we haven't touched on them all. We did, did we mention the, the fact that the, we had another Clarence reference? We're going to heaven, Clarence. Oh no, we didn't mm. mention that, but that you is know, a good- It's a Wonderful Life. Again, we love Meg. Uh, we love Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Just facts. We love Meg. We love Meg. We and we love, love when she makes references. Especially yeah. to really sad uh Christmas movies that grip you by the heart. <laughs> Christmas angels. <laughs> it's true. Uh... She's referencing. So get this. I was looking into the <laughs> lore, and we've got a couple important pieces. What with the cult and everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, Lucifer says, "Sorry." Turns out there's only five things in all of creation that that gun can't kill, and I happen to be one of them. So God, Michael, Lucifer is the easy three. The other two kind of ambiguous. I mean, okay, so well, and in all of create in all of creation, almost seems like God maybe wouldn't be included in that. True. That's like so. I'm like, well, is, but he, mm, but he says, I, so, mm, what unclear can't on that? Gun kill. Wrong answers only. Go. <laughs> okay. Ellen and Joe. <laughs> oh. 
Thank you. Too soon. I know. Uh, I'm going to say the gun can't kill the Impala. I'm going to say the Impala is one of those five things. <laughs> gun okay. just won't I do anything. It. Can't kill Good the Impala. <laughs> okay, well, I would say Gabriel and Raphael are the other two. Mm, so you were gonna you're gonna go with like the four archangels and yeah. God. Well, okay, but I think I think God is it's a good point. God wouldn't be on there if he's all of creation. So it depends if Lucifer is meaning like in all of creation, like in everything, or if he's meaning in all of like God's creation. Yeah. yeah. In which case it would be five things and presumably God. <laughs> Interesting. But what's your wrong answer only? My mine was Ellen and Joe. I I mean so, I, no. <laughs> No, you need, no. <laughs> I don't accept your answer. It's not a wrong answer. Chuck. It's not wrong. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe that's one of the five. God's vessel. <laughs> I'm I'm taking my inspiration from the thing we were just talking about. I'm gonna say Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> it could kill Gandalf the Grey, but don't even think about Gandalf the White. Yeah, he's absolutely impervious to the cold. I'm gonna say the gun uh, can't kill Soldier Boy. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Well done. It could uh, get Homelander though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homelander's like gone. Oof, he's out of here. Then works Gun on him. Can't kill Steed Bonnet. <laughs> That's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening and you want to provide us with more things that Colt can't kill, you can do so at our Twitter, which is at Queering Things Pod. Nope, at Queering underscore thing. <laughs> the the Colt can't kill Joel Miller. He can just press R2 to <laughs> <No>. heal. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the gun can't kill Burton Ernie. I was gonna say that and I was like is that too weird like no. literally my very first thought was the gun can't kill Muppets and I was like I'm not gonna say that because that's too absurd so thank you <laughs> oh oh yes okay so the Reapers oh, oh yeah yes. whole Many town Reapers full of Reapers up. we didn't even talk on that at all which a little terrifying honestly yeah I again I think the filming choice is great like the, yeah. the way they pan that shot where we see what the humans can see and then we see what cats can see yeah. is like really well done yeah and the music choices in that scene as well <clears throat> really <throat> ominous that is an interesting lore piece um i will say i think this might be a little bit lost canony elena maybe you can help me with this i feel like there are other scenarios later on in the show where equally death is present to this episode but you do not see that amount of reapers maybe a, a warehouse we're not seeing with them. a thousand bodies in it or um, something. I... <laughs> no that's way too deep i, I don't know what you're ta- I, 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 i'm just throwing out ideas i don't <laughs> <laughs> the only reason i would say it's not is because i feel like this is particular the reapers showing up is particular to death being raised okay because but Cass also says that but Cass says specifically that like the other times this has happened are like Pompeii. Like those are not times when death was raised. That's why I'm like. The Chicago fire, you know that? the San Fran quake, Pompeii. We don't know that, but there's, it's not, it's implied that death can only be raised very specifically. Like they say later huh? on that you could yeah. raise a really specific um, way. Although, okay. I don't know. So maybe yeah, Reapers could them. be in scenes that we're not seeing. I guess that could be a work. Well, it's also, yeah, it's also, we're not seeing, it's kind of an unreliable narrator situation because we don't know that there's not those Reapers there every time death is there. Well, but then they've got to be careful about seeing. establishing which characters can see Reapers. And then, you know, why the fuck didn't they react to all these which Reapers? There are going to be times in the future where Cass or other angels are going to be around who presumably should be able to see Reapers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it might be Lost Canon. Yeah, it like, that's why I say with Lost Canon E, it's not like strictly Lost well, Canon because I don't think it's like established enough. The rule is not established enough for them to break it. It's like it's like Lost Can. <laughs> I think if we leave it, I mean, if we assume that each of those prior incidences, someone was trying to raise death, then I think that Cass just has a misunderstanding of what a town full of Reapers is for. Oh, you know? that also because is true. The Maybe Chicago Cass fire, not... obviously there's a lot of fire. San Francisco, there's a lot of, you know, it's quaking, the ground's breaking, something's coming up from underneath. I don't know. Pompeii. Oh. Lava erupted from underneath. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Fantastic this, theory. You know, I, it kind of works. It kind of works. It. That's all. They're all. They, they're all very specifically similar natural disasters. All very hot. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that sounded no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, that, it's great. It's yes. great. Keep it in. Oh, Pompeii sexy is the sexiest Pompeii. natural disaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. We're uh, professional. Killing it. 
Another lore piece I noticed was <laughs> Lucifer was shocked that Castiel rode in an automobile. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer What's that like <laughs> simultaneously like can speak normal, but also simultaneously is somehow like an old timey guy, like doesn't <laughs> yeah. know the proper words for things. And it's just inconsistent. It's very funny. I think it's very funny. Yeah. 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 I'm told you came here in an auto. <laughs> I think Cass is just like, and he's like, how was it? Cass is like cramped. <laughs> or slow. <laughs> Well, like, yeah, I think he talks about it being slow and like yeah. not a lot of room. Yeah, confining. confining. Yeah, that's the word he uses. Yeah. <laughs> Last uh, lore piece that I noticed was Cass trying to zap Meg at the end. Whenever you know she fell into the circle. Oh yeah. And obviously, him throwing her down is is kind of a lore piece as well. You know, showing that you can break it if somebody gets pushed in, and you can. Oh yeah, yeah. Thinking of block the flame. The... Yeah. Yeah, something breaks the line. It's like yeah. with the salt line. Yeah. Yeah. But it's holy fire and using a demon. You know? It does seem that yeah. like that makes holy fire pretty easy to get out of. A little bit. If you like, have, I mean, does the holy fire not keep the demon inside? It just keeps the angel inside. Yeah, I yeah. Think so. That that has been established earlier is that okay. like holy fire is specific to angels. Cool. Yeah, because angels can come and go from a demon's trap. Yeah. Yeah. And demons or can devil's trap, rather. So if you stack them. Yeah. You do oh, devil's trap. Devil's, devil's trap. trap. Or you do like devil's trap on the on the ceiling. I would make <laughs> a really good name for like a band or like a drag show, Flaming Devil's Trap. I don't know. <laughs> trademark, trademark, uh, trademark. <laughs> ours now. You can't have it. <laughs> When we release our um watch the day before single. this episode goes up, somebody releases a song the day before. Uh, uh, I love it. Oh, I have one more lore piece, and that is uh Lucifer's vessel is disintegrating. Ooh. Oh yeah. In front of us. Not doing well. Which okay, I do love that effect. That it, it looks really cool and it's it's a fun little, you know. I, I'm curious to see where it goes from here, you know, how much it mm -hmm. spreads and gets worse. And I'm, I'm, I like that as a visual piece, you know? Yeah. It's a good ticking time bomb for like, he doesn't have the right vessel. His vessel is falling apart. Like it, it puts the pressure on. Is he going to use yeah. Nick all the way in for the six months? You know, like that's, ooh, it's going to get rough. Guess we'll have to find out. <laughs> I think that wraps us up for that. So it is time to segue us into our final segment today, which is blessing. We love doing our blessing. Who has got a character they would like to wish a blessing upon this episode? I would like to go first. I'm tempted you know to go what? first and just grab Joe, but I think you. I think that would be very funny. We had a whole argument before we started recording because Elena dibs a certain character <laughs> before Noah could get to it in the document. <laughs> but you know, I think it'd be a disservice to not do this character because I was so excited to see them again. So I'm going to bless Ellen because she deserves it and she's a fucking queen and this is her shining star moment mm -hmm. and I love her for everything that she did before this episode, during this episode and the impact she has on the boys after. And Yeah, because you know it's going to be very significant. Yeah. I love her whole last scene of well, talking to Joe and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. Wish we'd had more time. Yeah. Blessings yeah, to Ellen. Yeah. August, what about you? I'm going to bless Sam this episode. Oh, uh, yes. he, he needs it. Just for showing some, like, a significant amount of growth, I feel like. Yeah. We see him handling his anger. We see him going into a dangerous situation and not losing his cool. We see him, like, able to have these conversations with Dean with, a, like, a, a level of, like, closure and maturity that we haven't seen in a while. And, and this is rough for him, too. He loses Ellen and Joe, who are, like, family and... Yeah, I want to bless Sam for still being able to keep his cool after that. Yeah. Literally confronting the devil. Like he's being constantly reminded of this sort of destiny. And he he's holding steady. Holding steady with his brother and with Cass. And sort of bless him for like holding steady in an impossible situation. Bless his heart. Yeah. And so my blessing that I, I stole from Noah is going to go to <laughs> Joe, sweet Joe, who just always wanted to be a hunter and got to do that. And like, she, oh, she just breaks my heart this episode. Yeah. We we lost her too soon. Mm -hmm. She was way too fucking young. Yeah. Our girl. Yeah. She's like I said, she's one of my favorite characters in the whole series. And I'm sad we didn't get more of her. So blessing to Joe. Blessing to Joe. <laughs> So that sad, sad note is where we end this sad, sad episode. <laughs> we but, promise uh, next week will be different than Blessings this. Blessings is a great ending unless characters die. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, that oh. is just sad. <laughs> and it's just brutal. Yeah. Abandon all hope ye who listen here. 
but <laughs> but yeah talking with you guys Thank about you. it was the best way to deal with this yeah. episode you know anytime <laughs> you guys are my favorite coping all mechanism. the time all the, all the sad times <laughs> made slightly less sad together by friendship <laughs> Aww. well make sure you are all subscribed to saving people queering things wherever you listen to podcasts and share your show share our show with your friends your show too if you're listening this is your show too this yeah. is all we make this for you it's our show <laughs> and you can find links to our show on our social media and you can join our discord server through our website which is queeringthingspodcast.com if you are all caught up on supernatural but you can't get quite enough of uh people talking about it and you <laughs> want to go back to you before the beginning you can listen to you myself and elena along with our friends beth and kj over at wayward parents where we discuss the entire winchester season we've got a recap episode that will i think have just come out recapping the whole season um updates for that show are at wayward parents on twitter or on tumblr at wayward parents podcast be sure to ride along with us next week as we explore season five episode 11 sam interrupted thank you all for coming along for the ride and we wish you a peaceful road until we meet again Thank <laughs> you.